Hey, what's up guys? Um, in this video, I'm going to be going over a system design question. The question that we're going to be talking about is designing Ticketmaster. If you're watching this video, you're probably preparing for a technical interview at Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, and Apple. So this is a very popular style of interview where they ask you to uh, design a system. And we're going to go through the process of designing one right now. So uh, designing Ticketmaster, the first thing when you get a question like this should always be, what's the scale? Now, this is where you ask how many users, how many users concurrently, and what's the expected latency? These are all important problems because these, uh, these companies all deal with very large data sets and very large concurrent users, so they have to be able to handle those extremely quickly. So let's say users 60 million concurrent a couple hundred thousand latency five hundred milliseconds max. So now this gives us some constraints into our system so we can start designing it. Now, design-wise, personally, I believe that should always start with the database, the data modeling. Um, so let's think about what Ticketmaster needs. So Ticketmaster is a service that users can go on and buy a ticket. Since we know tickets have a limited quantity, and a lot of users will try to buy the same ticket We need to create some sort of queuing system to make sure that if a user comes in, he won't get a ticket unless there is one. Also, we need to make sure that if a user claims a ticket and doesn't check out, we need to give that unclaimed ticket to someone else. So to do this, I'm actually going to be using a model that I learned at Skirt. We were doing car rentals. So what we're going to do is in the database, we're going to create a user. This will have the typical things like the ID, the name, phone, email, etc. We're going to have tickets. which has the total number. And we're also gonna have a ticket request. This will hold the expiration date of this request, the user ID, and whether it's been fulfilled or not.
So the logic of this is that instead of deallocating tickets, we actually create a new request and fulfill that. So when a user checks how many tickets are left, they would check the number of requests that have not expired and have not been fulfilled and then subtract that from the total number. So now we have the database. We need to have a backend and we need to have a front end. Since this system is going to scale extremely quickly with how many users, we need to have a load balancer for the, back, for the front end with different clusters that can host the website. On the website, we'll have a couple buttons that hit certain APIs. So by one example of an API is going to hit a service on the back end which queues up a job on some sort of worker queue. That will check the database master to see if a valid ticket exists. And the reason for the worker queue is because if we have one backend, but millions of requests, this backend will fail. So instead we create job IDs that will put, get put onto a queue and then dispersed to numerous workers that will then communicate with the database master. And then the master will manage the database and make sure that during con uh, concurrent calls that the ticket number, a user will never get an opportunity to buy a ticket that isn't real. So now when the master returns, it will return a request. This will be passed back to the backend and the backend will pipe this to the user. So now the request exists and the user can go to checkout. The user will fill out the information from the front end and then when he clicks buy, it'll send to a back end. This will put it onto another queue and the purpose of this is we need to pay and then we need to fulfill the request. So the queue, we'll put it onto a couple workers. The workers will call a payment processor. The payment processor will return whether it was successful or it wasn't. This in turn will get piped to the back end. 
The backend will then communicate with the database, which is the master, and then going to the slave nodes or the second, uh, the worker nodes. Now, the master will follow logic and mark it as fulfilled. It will turn to the backend. And then when this call is done, the backend will turn and say, you successfully bought your ticket. Of course, there's other microservices that happen here too. Like it might send to an email server, it might send to an SMS server, it might send to push notifications. But these are all different microservices. Now, if the payment processor doesn't return successful, it will return back to the user and say, payment not successful. And it won't mark, it won't mark this ticket as taken. So how do you get the number of tickets available? The query would be count the tickets. Postgres um, from tickets left join quests on ticket ID equals request ticket ID where expiry is greater than now and fulfilled is not true. And then this would be tickets left minus the count. This is how many tickets are valid and the microservice architecture will let us minimize latency. So this would have a minimum latency of around 100 milliseconds. The queue putting it on would be really low, like one to two milliseconds. Assuming this is on the same network, this could actually be lower, maybe like two milliseconds. Clusters could be spun up dynamically to handle the load. Each one could handle let's say fifty to a hundred jobs a second. So as the server as the jobs increase, the workers will increase. So this will handle peak demand. The database could be sharded. We could keep rows zero to 100K, 100K to 200K, et cetera, et cetera, um, on different uh, database nodes. Of course, these could also have redundancies. We could have a watchman node. If anything fails, we'll buzz an engineer on call. So overall, the system theoretically would be able to handle maximum demand at reasonable latency. So this is 
how you would design something like Ticketmaster on your Facebook, Apple, Amazon, um, Amazon, Google kind of interview. Microsoft, Google. Thanks for watching and uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more interview tips.